بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين I am very happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being able to meet again and I hope inshallah we can meet more often inshallah so what we want to discuss in these two days <coughs> is how we can help our students to be more rational. Uh, first, I talk a little bit about significance of being rational, and then I will share some thoughts, but I very much also like to hear about your thoughts. You may have heard me saying that when I was writing the book She Islam Origins, Faith and Practices, uh, then I was thinking maybe I need to discuss something about general characteristics of Shia Muslims or Shia Islam. Uh, because in that book, you know, I discuss about the origins of Shia Islam, about the sources, about practices, about current situation in the world, like the statistics, holy cities. So all are discussed. But then I thought maybe there is a need for something specific. What would be the general characteristic of Shia Islam? Is it on? So I was thinking what can be a general description? This is uh, <clears throat> this part was about 2000 2001 when I was finishing the book. And Alhamdulillah, three things came to my mind. And since then, I am more and more convinced that if these three are together, we have a spirit of Shia Islam. Of course, maybe some Shia themselves don't have this, or maybe non-Shia have this, but this is what the Shia uh, characteristics are. One was rationality. Shia throughout the history have shown great interest to reasoning, thinking, and also to any sciences which are intellectual, like logic, like philosophy, like theoretical erfan. <clears throat> so they have shown interest into these uh, subjects as well. So rationality is very important for Shia Muslims. Sometimes even if historians or biographers don't know whether this writer or thinker was a Shia or not, one evidence that can be used is whether he had interest in philosophy or not. This can be a sign. <laughs> the second characteristic was spirituality. And it's very important for the Shia not to be satisfied with just performing the rituals. We have great interest in the spiritual dimension of rituals or everything. Whether it's Salat, you know, we have lots of discussions about secrets of Salat. If it is fasting, about secrets of us, about everything. About Dua, Dua is very important for us. And the third was search for justice. Justice, 
not only is one of our five principles of faith, uh, divine justice, but also in everything you find justice as a very important element. Many positions need justice. Imam al-Jama'ah, Imam al-Jum'ah, judge, witnesses, narrators of hadith, you know, many things we say justice is a requirement. In any case, I mentioned these three and alhamdulillah, after that I had the opportunity to give uh, one Muharram series of lectures on this in London, one Muharram in Toronto. And on many occasions I talked and I am very convinced that these three are very important. Even once we had a, a dialogue with a World Council of Churches and I mentioned these three as three requirements of having good understanding of faith in order to avoid violence etc and then they said all religions even our christian friends they said you know all religions should have these three rationality and spirituality and search for justice but these three should be together if you are just a spiritual or just rational or just concerned about justice but don't have the rest it may not work well the black one Do you have another mic to change? Yeah, I'm checking. Let me get another one. No, what you can do is take it away and Chef will carry on and then we'll try and fix it on the other yes. side. Yes, Chef. They say two people had rivalry. <laughs> so one of them said, Our nation are very advanced. They said, How? He said, Because we made some, you know, exploration and we found 1000 years ago our ancestors used wires so we had wires 1000 years ago the other one said we are more advanced why he said we checked everything and we didn't find wires so our ancestors were wireless <laughs> so they were more advanced Okay, so these three have to be together. Okay, now today we want to talk only about the first one, about rationality. And this rationality is so important that it can be sign of Iman. If a mu'min is not going by reason, is not making decisions based on reason, then it's not a well advanced or well grown moment yes no, no rational means uh, to like you know ah, yeah they say uh, one of uh, maraj received letters from people that you know we live in this city and we have a great alim, very knowledgeable, very not pious. Could you make him your vakil, so that whenever we need to have permission, whatever from Marja, we can ask him. He didn't reply. After some time, some of them went to Najaf for Ziyara and they met uh, Agha and said, you know, Agha, we sent such request. We have such an alim, he's very knowledgeable, very pious. Agha said, but you didn't write to me about his aql. How aql, how wise he is. 
It's not enough just to have knowledge and taqwa. Because if you are not wise, if you are not rational, you can make big decisions based on emotions, being you know rushed or pressurized or I don't know, the overreaction. Rationality is very important. Imam Kazim alayhi salam in his uh, beautiful hadith to Hisham ibn Hakam, which you find in the beginning of Al Kafi, Kitab al Aql wal Jahl, just at the very beginning, after a few pages, you have this hadith of Imam Kazim to Hisham ibn Hakam, and it's very beautiful hadith. Alhamdulillah. In the Shrine of Lady Masuma, we had 11 lectures on this hadith. It's on YouTube, Imam Kazim, on the intellect. So I mentioned some of the things that Imam Kazim salam said to Hisham. It's very beautiful. Uh, one of our brothers, I asked him many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, to do his master's dissertation on this, and he did and was published. Imam said, Ya Hisham. You know Hisham ibn Hakam was a uh, great theologian trained by Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Ya Hisham, inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala bashara ahla al-aql wal-fahm fi kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Bishara to the people of Aql and Fahm, people of intellect and understanding. You know, understanding is different from knowing. Knowledge is very important, but true knowledge comes with understanding. What's the difference? Can you give an example where someone has information but doesn't understand? Yes, sometimes when we know why should we call it? But I can't explain it. Or, well, we can't apply it. Yeah. 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 That shows For example, maybe someone has uh, studied medicine. Yes. But doesn't understand what is wrong with you. Yeah? Mm. Knows all the things, but doesn't know what is applicable in this case. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, many people who have just studied, but they don't have experience. They can tell you all the theories, but even they can teach, but they cannot apply. Uh, Ayatollah Mutahari in one of his books has a, a nice example. He says, there was a person who used to work for the king as a, you know, a person who was, you know, fortune teller and, you know, seeing about future or for example, if something was missing, by using some you know strange sciences he was able to help the king so now he was going to retire and he wanted to have his son take over so the king wanted to test him so king took something in his hand and said tell me what it is so this person was not experienced but his father had trained him, but no experience. So said, is it something uh, like a circle? He said, yes. So this was good. Does it have a hole inside? He said, yes. Yes. Ahsan, thank you. Thank you very much. So you can hear now better, it's better. Okay. So, so far was based on theory. He applied the theory. It was a circular thing and it had a hole inside. Now he has to use his understanding in calculation. Okay. So he said, is it meal stone? You know, in the mills, they used to have big stone. And for example, a horse was going around to make, you know, flour. And the king laughed. He said, how can I hold the millstone in my hand? 
it was a ring just a ring so what was about theory he was able to apply but what was his fahm he could not apply yeah so this is very important that knowledge as theory is not enough understanding is very important this is what we call in arabic fahm fahm is very important Imam Kazim says, Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala bashara ahla al-aql wal-fahm fi kitabihi. For example, Allah says, Fabashir ibad al-lazina yastami'oon al-qawl fayattabi'oon ahsana. This is bashara. For those servants who listen to the words and choose the best. This needs rationality and understanding. But aql without knowledge is not also complete. If someone says, I am very rational, but I don't want to learn, I don't want to study, I just use my aql. Aql needs also knowledge. Because aql is to process knowledge. You cannot process without having anything. Yeah, so You say, you know, I am very wise, but I don't want to study medicine. I become a doctor. It's not possible. So Imam says, Ya Hisham. Thumma bayyana anna al ma'al ilm. Aql should be with knowledge. For example, you see Allah says in the Quran in Surah An Kabut, verse 43. Those examples, those parables, we make it for people. But who are the people who are going to understand? Those who have knowledge. So, aql with knowledge works. Aql without knowledge doesn't work. What about knowledge without aql? This is a tricky question. Aql with knowledge works or doesn't work? Aql with knowledge works. Without knowledge, doesn't work. Knowledge without aql works or doesn't work? No. Uh -huh. Aql without knowledge says I don't know. So doesn't work. But knowledge without aql works but in a bad way. <laughs> It's not that he says, you know, I don't know. Because doesn't have aql, then doesn't have limit. So, you know, I have knowledge, I can say, you know, everything. You like people who just graduate and they think they can, you know, change the whole world. You need experience, you need consultation, you need, you know, lots of things. You cannot just buy knowledge. So, knowledge without aql may not stop working, may still want to work, but can create problems. If we have knowledge and aql together, it's very important. What I want to say in these two sessions that we have is that we should not be satisfied with just giving information or knowledge to our students. We need also to help them use their aql. This is a you know, great achievement if you can make them use their aql. But not in the way that, you know, some secular, you know, people may say. Because for them, aql is just a matter of asking questions and not accepting things, you know, being critical. They think to be aql means just to be critical. No, this is one aspect of aql that doesn't accept without reasons. Yeah, we should not accept without reasons. But it doesn't mean that we then develop hesitation to accept things. We cannot trust anyone. 
We cannot trust reliable authorities. If Allah says something, I say, I don't accept. You have to convince me because I'm aql. But this is not aql. This is ignorance. Mm -hmm. Like I say to doctor, I'm dying, for example. Doctor says, you know, you have to do surgery. I say, no, you have to teach me how you come to this conclusion. By the time he teaches you, <laughs> you are dead. Even if he has time. Many times the doctor says, I don't have time. You know, you have to study six years, seven years. So, aql is not just a matter of asking questions. Inshallah, I will explain these things. But whatever is aql, inshallah, we will explain, has to be your concern. First, you yourself should be aql, rational, wise people, and then try to help your students to develop this rationality. It's very important. So, this was the second thing I quoted from Imam Qadim. The third. So, what was the first? Bashara ahl al aql wal fah. Second was. Bayana anna al aql ma al ilm. Third. Thumma zamma al ladina la yaqilun. Zamma. Blame ya. Zamma. Al ladina la yaqilun. Allah blamed those who don't use their aql. Yes? You know, there was a shop selling brains of people. So, there was brain of Einstein was expensive. But there was another brain which was more expensive. They said, why this person is brain so expensive? He said, because he never used his brain. He's brand new. <laughs> 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 Einstein used a lot his brain. This is brand new. So there are people that they don't use their aql. Okay? But the problem is that aql by using becomes better. By aql is not like a heater or car or computer that if you don't use it better. The more you use your aql, the better it becomes. Yes? ثم ذم الذين لا يعقلون فقال إذا قيل لهم اتبعوا ما أنزل الله قالوا بل نتبع ما ألفينا عليه آباءنا ألفينا يعني وجدنا instead of following what Allah has revealed they say we follow what we found our fathers doing أَفَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاؤُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَحْتَدُونَ even if your fathers and sisters didn't use their aql and were not guided, you will still follow them. If your parents, your fathers and sisters had some good qualities, it's good to follow those good qualities. But just to follow them and say, you know, I don't accept anything new because my father or ancestors used to do this, it's not rational. Another thing that Imam Qadim salam, also mentions in this beautiful hadith, of course, hadith is few pages, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also blames the people who just go by majority. Majority is not a proof. Even for us followers of Ahlul Bayt, Ijma, which is consensus, by itself is not a proof. Because all people can make mistake. All people can agree on something wrong. We say ijma is hujja when? When is ijma hujja for us? When ijma can help us to understand the opinion of ma'soom. If ijma, yakshif and ra'yil ma'soom. Otherwise, if for example, ulama today, all of them agree on something. This is not hujja. Another alam may disagree. Yeah, This is why our maraja, our mujtahideen, although they read books of other mujtahideen, but they never follow them. Mujtahid 
has to go back to the Quran and Sunnah. Cannot say, I say this because my teacher said this. My teacher was a great alim. I want to have the same fatwa as my teacher. No. You have to develop your own understanding. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting. We say taqlid is wajib. Yeah, for people who are not experts, because either they have to become mujtahid, it takes time, and not everyone can become mujtahid. Or you have to do ihtiyat, okay, you can do ihtiyat, but ihtiyat is difficult. Then you have to do taqlid as a, a kind of facility, taqlid. So for us that we don't want to do ihtiyat and we are not mujtahid, taqlid is wajib, because there's the only option. But what about a mujtahid? For mujtahid, taqlid is haram. Mujtahid cannot do taqlid. So therefore you see when ulama give permission for ijtahad, they say this person cannot do taqlid. He's mujtahid, he has to rely on his own opinion. So it's not that we always say people should do taqlid. No, we say what is your level of understanding and knowledge? If you have become expert, you must not do taqlid. If you are not an expert, you must do taqlid. Okay, it's very rational. So, even ijma of ulama is not for us hujja, unless helps us to understand the view of ma'asum. For example, if we see ulama or companions of Ahlul Bayt in the time of Ahlul Bayt, they all agreed on something, maybe we say then it helps us to discover the view of ma'asum. Anyway, we don't accept ijma, let alone consensus, yes, let alone majority. Yeah, so what we do, we say that there is such a issue, such an issue. For this issue, we don't find any verse in the Quran or any hadith. But we see all our ulama from the beginning have one fatwa. So we say maybe they had access to something that we have not received. But if they have consensus and the consensus is based on a hadith, I cannot accept consensus. I have to check the hadith myself. This is what called ejma'i madraki. If there is consensus based on a hadith, a mujtahid has to investigate hadith. This maybe for him, this hadith is not authentic, or maybe the dalala is not complete. So mujtahid cannot rely on understanding of previous mujtahidin on Quran or hadith. But if there is nothing and they had ajma, then we can say so. Maybe they had something that we have not received it. So majority therefore is not hujja for us if if ajma is not hujja by itself majority is not hujja okay for example imam kadhim referred as an example surah an verse 116 wa in tuta akthara man fil ard yuzalluka yuzalluka an sabilillah wa in tuta أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُظِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنْ وَإِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ Because the majority of people just follow their dhan. Dhan means uh, suspic suspicion in logical sense. Means just doubts. In logic, if doubt is 50-50, we call it shak. If it is more than 50, we say van. But in Arabic can be more general. Basically, they just follow their opinions. They don't have proof. Majority of people are not, you know, Socrates or Ibn Sina or Mullah Sadra. Majority of people in the world, they just follow patterns they have inherited or, you know, what is, you know, said on media, you know. So, I cannot say I do this because majority of people say this. I believe in this because majority of people say this. 
Majority is not a hujja. A person who is rational and wise would not go by majority or by ajma or by fashion. Something has become fashionable. I should do it. I should. No. Something is on media, on TV, as seen on TV. No. This is not hujja for us. Then you may say, what about then democracy? In democracy, we go by majority. So what is Islamic understanding of? That's a side issue. But just in barakats, we say majority or consensus don't show the truth. But sometimes practically, we may have no choice other than going by majority. Yeah, because we cannot fight if there is no divine authority then we are all equal we go by majority but if rasulullah is there we don't go by majority <laughs> you say you know when rasulullah is there we want to vote whether we should do this way or that way we listen to rasulullah so if someone has authority from god then we don't go by majority but if we are all equals we are all you know people without authority from god then is it better to go by majority or by minority it's better to go by majority yeah of course here there can be you know suggestions that maybe it's better majority choose some of the rational and experts and then they you know entrust this task to them because majority cannot vote for everything in a good way yeah so if you are for example 50 million people and we want to make a decision for example about you know something very important instead of going for majority just these 50 million people should choose 50 people for example who are very knowledgeable very experienced very wise and say we go by your decision maybe 30 people decide for the nation but this 30 is better than 30 million of uneducated people for example or experts unexpert in voting so we don't want to now talk about you know political theories but what we want to say is majority doesn't determine the truth consensus doesn't determine the truth truth should be based on what on reason on proof in Hosea, you know we say nahnu abna dalil we are children of Dalil, proof. Wherever Dalil takes us, we go like a child, takes the hand of mother or father, go with them. <laughs> we go by Dalil, we don't go by pressure or emotions, etc. Okay? So, in this hadith, one of the things that Imam Qadim says, which has become very famous, is inna lillah ta'ala ala nasi hujjatain Allah has two hujjah for people hujjatan zahira there is external hujjah which is al anbiya wa rusul wal a'imma the prophets messengers imams wa hujjatan batina wa hiya al aql there is internal hujjah which is aql is there conflict between the two no. Allah cannot, you know, give us one hujja inside, one hujja outside, which disagree and fight with each other. It's impossible. There is harmony between aql and revelation. Okay? What is the meaning of hujja, by the way? If someone asks you, what is the meaning of hujja? Allah has two hujja. Proof is used, but what does it mean, proof? When we say Allah has two hujja. Hujja means ma yuhtajjubi. Yeah? Ah, you can say evidence, but evidence for what? Uh -huh. You know, the best thing I found so far is in Ziyarat Ali Yasin. Assalamu alayka ya hujjatallahi wa dalila iradatihi. 
Hujja means dalil or iradat Allah. Something by which you can be sure what Allah wants from you. There are two ways to understand what Allah wants from you. One is to go to revelation, wahi. One is to go to aql. On the day of judgment, Allah can argue based on these two, and we can argue. If I do something or I believe in something, I can say this was my hujjah. If I don't act, Allah says, you know, you had hujjah, why you didn't follow? So both of us can use this hujjah. Okay? Uh, you must have heard this term, you know, we use it a lot. Etmamul hujjah. What is etmamul hujjah? means you explain it in the way that the other person has no excuse he says you know i, I didn't know we say la allah yakuna lin nas ala allah hujjatun ba'da ar-rusul do i not be also this mentioned yeah so that people have no hujja means they cannot say you know why you didn't explain to us if you had explained to us we would have followed so hujja has mutual function we can use, Allah can use. It's between us because he has conveyed to us. So Imam Qazim says Allah has two types of hujjah, internal and external. If it was possible to bring prophet inside, it was your aql. If the Prophet was inside you, you don't hear two things. You would hear one thing, the same thing as Aql. If it was possible to bring Aql out, was the Prophet. So the Prophet is, we say, Aql Mujassa, embodiment of Aql. Okay? There is harmony. Aql and Wah. Yes, they support each other, they supplement each other. Now, I have a question for you till tomorrow. So, uh, this is, uh, unfortunately, our time is very limited. So, today we talked about significance of Aql. We cannot expand more. I request you to talk uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe at the beginning I ask you, or write something. How we can make our students in primary and then the secondary level like teenagers more rational what are the things that we can do for example for a first year child second year child what does rationality mean for the child is you cannot say you know study philosophy and teenagers but according to the level so for the first group, for the second group, what are the things that we can work on to make them more rational? Okay? And then I will, inshallah, discuss. I share with you my thoughts. But first I want to hear your thoughts, inshallah. And also I want you to be thinking and engaged. So you want us to tell you what practical things that we can do? Yes. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh,